Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack. Today is March 21st, and today's episode is going to cover a community call with Notional. It's also going to cover a call for testing for RPIP 30, and there's some talk about airdrops. So let's get started. 10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is this community call with Notional that happened today. Now, I feel really bad that I didn't let you all know that this was happening. I guess it slipped my radar too. Um, and I was actually recording an episode of the Weekly Orbit with Pat uh, at the time that this was happening. So I wasn't able to give, well, I wasn't able to listen to it myself either. But um, Notional, for those of you who don't know, Jasper explains it here. He says they're a fixed rate lending borrowing uh, protocol they're the OG protocol for it. They're now launching version three and they're going to be um, including lots of RE incentives. So you all know that I've covered Notional a few times on Rocket Fuel. Should make it clear I have never been paid anything by Notional. I don't hold their token or anything like that. They're just like Rocket Pool and RE. So I like Notional. <laughs> anyway, um, there was some um, piece of information that people were kind of like mentioning in trading, but not really that much. So I'm hoping that recording of that will become available at some point in the next few days. And um, once that's available, then um, you all can listen to it. But Notional, of course, are launching on Mainnet on March 25th, which is, you know, the end of this week. Sorry, uh, beginning of next week. Um, and um, they've got a lot of cool stuff going on for um, a Rocket Pool. So um, here you know, they've got a Twitter thread saying that Notional version 3 launches on May tw March 25th. We're excited to support Rocket Pool, Liquid Stakers, and kick things off with a bank. Here are opportunities we'd like, we'll offer for our ETH holders. Let's have a quick look at this Twitter thread and see what they're talking about. So they are saying that they will have, um, you know, the our ETH liquidity. You can get passive yield and no incentives. Um, and then if you want to get a little bit spicier, you can juice your APYs from providing liquidity by using leverage. So you leverage our ETH liquidity. It allows you to provide our ETH liquidity and then borrow our ETH against it to provide more liquidity all in one click. So it's like looping basically for your our ETH. This is for the truly adventurous. This is some new information that was shared in the community call as well. It said for the truly adventurous, a leveraged vault that deploys into the our ETH wrapped um, e ETH balance liquidity pool, earn leverage yield from your liquidity tokens balance and or incentives and etherfi and eigenlayer points this one's going to be good want to know more come here about the rocket pool this thursday at 10 a.m eastern time that was of course the the community call that happened but this pool i think like they said it's going to be a big pool um i'm really excited to see how that's going to work so um in the community call they covered this stuff and, and more and um Jasper was kind of, um, he shared the screenshot as well of them talking about that pool that I was just mentioning. And um, that basically, that, that's going to be some really big rewards for you with, with all these different levels of rewards as well. So that's definitely going to be one to keep an eye on. But um, yeah, if you do listen to that, let me know. Uh, give me a summary of it. I'll cover it on the show. Okay, next we have this update from Langers and Val. So this is about RPIP30. So of course, you know that RPIP30 was the one of the previous uh, changes to the tokenomics that the community did. Um, and this was changing the balance of rewards depending on how much you um, provide in terms of collateral. And the idea, of course, it was that, you know, it was going to bring more LEB8s online. It would be a bigger incentive for node operators to top up their validators um, and um, it would hopefully bring new validators online too. So um, one of the things that happened is, you know, this was going to be phased in over six months and the current uh, phase in part of that was changing the withdrawal of your RPL collateral from 150% of the collateralized on the node down to 100%. So this was actually deployed to Haleshki on the testnet. Langer said that, you know, well, withdrawal to 100% has been deployed on testnet. Please comment community community testing thrashing. So Valdorf was really promoting this. Uh, and he says that some community members have already done it. Like he patches, um, you know, he was able to change his stake. And, um, and um, he was um, able to uh, get down to um, 100%, which was really cool like you know it says 100 percent of its bonded eth um, and then val was mentioning that there are um 
other uh, people who are ready to do it um, and four more people who are waiting their one day cooldown. So this should be getting tested in the next few days. And once that is more thoroughly tested, then we'll be able to um, basically push it to mainnet in about in one month's time um, in between the next reward period and the one after that. So um, that's pretty cool to see. Okay, talking about Langers, Langers here gave another update about the Starknet airdrop. And um, someone asked him about the, you know, how it's going to work. Is it going to go to the node? Is it going to go to the withdrawal address? Um, so Langus here says it would be going to the withdrawal address for the node. We're working with Starknet on it. I hope to have more information this week. And there's still a couple of loose ends I'd like to settle. But we'll let everyone know that we're still working on it uh, tomorrow. Um, oh, and don't tag me directly next time. All good. <laughs> I think he... Um, he was joking. He says, fine to ping me um, because someone had pinged him and then everybody's like, oh, you can't, you're breaking rule three of trading. And of course, you know, the rules of trading are do not ping the team. Um, but um, he has, you know, someone pinged Langas and deleted the post. But Langas like, oh, I was just joking. Um, just don't expect an immediate answer. Basically, so the idea is Langas, like if you're kind of filling in the blanks from the stuff that we talked about yesterday, um, it shows that, you know, the the lists have been provided now from the rocket pool side which is something that we were kind of talking about in yesterday's episode so the list has been provided and the addresses are available for everyone who was staking with rocket pool and had a validator before the uh before the merge um and hopefully um you know your provisions like your airdrop will uh, be accessible um very soon uh langa says there's still a couple of loose ends so hopefully those will be cleaned up you know by tomorrow and then once that's all done, then we will be able to um, get information, potentially get our access to our airdrops next week, which will definitely be really exciting. So thank you, Langus, for that update. Okay, talking about airdrops and coming to the Rocket Pool community, here Mig went talking to the people in um, the ZK Sync era uh, Discord. So he says, I hope when ZK Sync will airdrop something, Ethereum node operators that have contributed to lower fees with blobs will be taken into consideration. So he's basically saying that like when it comes time for an airdrop to, to ZK Sync users, um, then also include uh, Rocket Pool node operators or Ethereum node operators in that. And then uh, one of their admins replied by saying, um, my dear friend, you might want to believe that ZK Sync team is community driven and will do everything to compensate the community duly. No, that's only if there's been that's only if there's an airdrop in the future. Kindly keep an eye on the announcement and token information channels for relevant information. Thank you. So basically, that you know, everyone says that there's no airdrop, um, and that's just the way that it happens until there is an airdrop. Um, you know, Arbitrum said it for I think a year that there was going to be no airdrop uh, before there was an airdrop. So it's the same situation, you know, with Eigenlayer saying there's going to be no airdrop, but of course there's going to be an airdrop. Um, and now he and ZK Sync are saying that, uh, you know, if there is an airdrop in the future, then we will um, do everything to compensate the community duly. So I think uh, Starknet kind of made it fashionable to airdrop to um, node operators. And I'm really hoping that, you know, we'll get airdrops from uh, ZK Sync, Scroll, Tyco, um, potentially blast i don't know any other layer twos that are going um they might be dropping to air uh, dropping to uh rocket pool node operators as well as you know ethereum stakers which would be really really great um and i think that would be amazing so here yeah, you know there's just a snippet of an idea of an airdrop for rocket pool node operators but it's definitely something that um could end up being quite valuable so it's a nice idea Okay, next we had this news that could have potentially been devastating for Ethereum. So Marius here, um, who works uh, with um, the Geth uh, Go Ethereum, um, and he says on February 6th, Nero and Parithosh sent a transaction on Sepolia, which uncovered a bug that could have happened on mainnet. The bug was quickly fixed in the client, and now after all nodes have updated Dencoon, we can finally disclose the issue. So um, let's have a look at what the issue is. Then there's a blog post. So there's a background prior to the merge, different message size limits for uh, RPC communication was set to protect clients from denial of service attacks. These limits applied to messages received via HTTP endpoints were carried over to the engine API, which plays a crucial role in connecting execution and consensus layer clients during block production. Due to the engine's 
Engine API's involvement in block production, it became possible for blocks to be produced that surpassed the RPC size limits of some clients but remained within the acceptable range for others. If an attacker created a message that exceeded the size limit of the client with the lowest setting while still adhering to the gas limit requirements and then waits for a block to be produced, it could result in a situation where some clients regard the block as valid while others reject it, issuing a HTTP co error code um, 413 content too large. So uh, the impact of this would have been that the chain split basically and it would have been really bad. So <laughs> Um, they discovered this, they were able to patch it, they were able to fix it, and Geth was was fine. But um, while it says, while Geth was the only client affected by this bug, other clients have also updated their defaults to be safe from this attack. Even if gas limits are increased, the client team indicated the following updates um, have the safe RPC limits. So Geth 1.13.12, Nethermind 1.25.4, Isu 24.1.2, Aragon um, 2. 58.0 and ref which is the alpha um, uh, 1.0 alpha 18 so this is the kind of like horrible scenario that we were all kind of wanting to avoid thankfully you know it was caught on on testnet and fixed without there being any issues but uh this could have broken ethereum basically so you know um client diversity issues are real um let me actually just see what it's looking like right now um Client of us now get is at 70%. Of course, you know, we want it below 66%. So if you are still if you are watching this episode, if you are on Geth, please, please, please get off Geth. Go to uh Nethermind Bisu, like both of those are available on the smart node stack. Um, and either of those, you know, are fine clients. I use both of them and they're great. So um please get off Geth as soon as possible and go onto one of these others. That is not to say Geth is not a good piece of software, Geth is fantastic but um you know we don't want there to be any bug on a super majority client because that would lead to the bad 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 outcome and we don't want that and thanks to rocknet for bringing that to my attention okay next we've got this interesting story from trading um from um fuini uh, seven here so um he basically came into trading yesterday and said that he made a mistake with sending money um he thought he was sending money to um he says look uh, i have an offer i have a bounty to offer for gigabrains of the blockchain here 20 percent of three thousand seven hundred dollars can probably be solved in two minutes i'll explain so he says he deposited on polymarket with his metamask wallet they create a new address when you do that he says the new address is a derivative of your private key but instead of sending to Polygon proof of stake, I ended up sending it to Polygon ZK EVM. So he sent it to the wrong chain with the address. So what ended up happening was he asked people in trading if anyone could help um, get that money back, basically the $3,700. And then Invis said, Ramana, there's free money for you here. Um, and um, then um, Ramana basically, uh, he's like, let's get you some money. So Ramana said, uh, I'll have a look. I just got home. So he started playing around with transactions and um, kind of like rebuilding, I think, transaction history on the other chain and getting like the contract set up properly and everything. So he kind of breaks it all down on the links that I'm I'm sharing here. In fact, at one point he said actually Romana stole all the money. So I think that was when he got access to the um to the wallet and was able to get the money out. And then um here um when he gets most of the money back so he says new is possible um that my that's my only talent you did 100 percent good so he says i'll send you 700 dollars in a few hours honest so um Aramana here then kind of explained what what had happened and he said that he ended up writing about a thousand lines of code to get it done um and the guy was like oh should, do i owe you ten thousand and he's like no no you're all good um and most he said most of the codes are just uh transactions hard coded so um, he kind of um, gave the whole story over here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, so he says the, it was lost due to sending on the wrong network, so sending it on Polygon ZK EVM instead of Polygon Proof of Stake and got it back with the transactions that you saw in trading. So you can go and check those. But then um, Ramana gives the whole story. So he says the address was sent to was supposed to be a Gnosis safe proxy or actually an empty account because it was on the wrong network. The 
address of this proxy is deterministic because A is created using create2 and B, the creator is itself another contract, some kind of deployer contract, I guess. So we had to recreate all of this stuff on ZK ABM to mimic the creation of the safe. And then he says the addresses are the same, but the address holding the fund nobody has the private keys for. So we had to make a contract that was controllable by us. And then he says, I also effed up the safe creation. I created the proxy without creating the implementation first, which gave me a window to create the implementation afterwards and set up the proxy with my own address as owner. And then he says, if the implementation contract had already been there, it would have been stuck with uh, Fuini as the owner um, since Fuini 7 was required to get the correct address. He says, this is the write up, folks. If another writer wants to do an actual write up, I'll be happy to help. And he says, uh, Sneaky says, class dismissed. <laughs> so basically, um, it was a nice little story. Uh, and the thing to do is um, uh, basically look at the transactions and see how it all worked out. But um, it's it's pretty cool. So that was, uh, that was a nice little story uh, from trading there. Um, oh yeah, that's what we covered. So yeah, we need gets most of the money back, which is which is awesome. Okay, and finally, I'm going to finish with a little self-shell, kind of. So um, I've been really enjoying playing around on Ethereum Layer 2s, you know, the last week since the Denkun upgrade. Um, and as you can see, the fees have been absolutely amazing. So on Optimism, Arbitrum, Base, um, ZK Sync, transactions cost a cent or less. Uh, you know, swapping tokens cost less than, a do uh, less than a cent as well. And this is, you know, a thousand times cheaper than Ethereum Mainnet, basically, uh, which is just phenomenal. So I got really excited about uh, base, especially because that's what I did my rocket fuel transactions on last week. Um, I really liked it. And um, I was like, let's go play on layer two. Because what happened is when I was doing the transactions for rocket fuel, a bunch of people who I was trying to send money to had never used base before or never used any layer two before. So I was kind of like telling them a little bit about how they could do it, when, you know, how they receive their money, etc. So that gave me the idea of trying to like onboard a whole bunch of more people onto base. So I created this thread where I told people, look, go to base and I'll send you some ETH and RPL so you can go and play around. I'm just going to send $2 of ETH and $2 of RPL. And that's more than enough to like do whatever you want. Um, so I said, I'll, I'll send everyone who shares the address $2 of RPL and $2 of ETH. So a whole bunch of people have shared their address. So I'm putting this in the episode today and then probably on um, Thursday night, which is, you know, uh, about hours after i release this episode um i'll go through and i'll find all the addresses and i will send um some eth and rpl to everyone who's left their addresses here so it's basically i'm being the benefactor on a like really really small baby scale but um it's just to onboard people onto base so uh, i'm really excited about using it i think ethereum has been so exciting on layer twos this last week and it's a really nice experience so i thought i would share that with all of you all so if you're interested just pop your address into that channel into that thread sorry and um i will um send you some money later so on that note um i'm gonna say thanks everyone for watching listening and being part of the rocket fuel community and um i'm going to um be back tomorrow with a new episode but until then um have a great day and i'll see you then bye